if you have faith in Swami and if you have faith in the universe and the almighty God, you are in, you are, your mind is feeling so good. Your immune system is strengthened. Your body is feeling good and you are able to fight any disease. So that is the reason we emphasize on, you know, all these spiritual practices, right? Um, you know, uh, meditating obviously strengthens our mind. Uh, you know, exercise strengthens our body. Singing bhajans also strengthens our mind. So I think it's important that we have faith because if you don't and you will die of your own suffering, you will invite the illness around you. Uh, and it, it's, it's a key that, uh, you know, we should continue to pray and whatever activities that makes you calm and happy. It's so important to be peaceful. Thank you very much, sister. I think uh, if, if some fantastic thoughts um, about the negative impact of fear itself on our health. Thank you very much. Okay, so if there is no one else uh, venturing to say anything or ask a question, there I is a couple of other questions which is, someone had posted. Sir, um, I think someone in B has posted a question. Okay, can you read it, please? How do you fulfill your life's purpose before your death? I think the question, I think we have to ask another question. What exactly is our life's purpose? I think uh, um, if, uh, can you, uh, I don't know, whoever has asked, the life's purpose before you, I think sometimes uh, we are all confused. I think uh, each of each person thinks um, their purpose of life is different, I guess, unless uh, we take what Swami has told us as the purpose of life. Purpose of life is to realize that we are God. Um, I think Swami has always said that he will help us even extend our lease of life uh, if we are on the path to finding our our own divinity and so rishis uh, were able to live for several hundred years or sometimes longer because they were pretty serious in their quest for life quest for the purpose of life a quest for god and i think um, god usually takes care of it and uh, also i think um, if we are uh, in the best, uh, if we are on the, we are seeking God with such earnestness. Go well, even if we uh, die, our next life is supposed to be in a better environment where we can continue our sadhana in a better manner. I think this is an assurance which Swami has given in Satya Sai Vahini, which he has written, in which he says a person who is following the path of sadhana. Um, will be given a better and better opportunities to pursue that sadhana, maybe in a, uh, in a new uh, body or new set of circumstances. And so that is something which Swami has talked about. So I don't think um, once we leave it to surrender to God and um, we are working on fulfilling the life's purpose of realizing God, I think God will take care of us whether in this life or next life, or in between lives also. And that's my belief. Unless someone else has something to say, uh, please uh, join and uh, please unmute yourself and say something. I, I would like to add a couple of points to that. So the first question is uh, purpose of life. So obviously the purpose of life is, is self-realization being one with the ultimate uh, consciousness the god and how do we achieve it before death then we shouldn't think death as an end if we think just this life as one moment or one chance then uh, no that shouldn't be the case we should think this as a progressive thing that goes on and goes on just as you explained and it is mentioned in the sixth chapter of gita that once you whatever good deeds that you do it's all cumulative it's all added up and once you take a next birth probably you would be getting a chance to be born in a house of a yogi or such wise intellectual people where you will be at a better state and in situation to continue your path from there so 
yes till the time you are able to achieve that self-realization that's your goal and that goes on thank you anyone else would like to add something we have about 40 people i guess someone can say something so i, I will take it that you know i think everyone is um, Sairam, Sairam, go ahead. Sairam, I think purpose of life, uh, the, the the explanation uh, everyone talks is kind of uh, good understanding that we come from, you know, God creation. We had to go back to God. I think that is the ultimate thing for purpose of life, I believe. Sairam. I think there's another set of question which were there. I think maybe I will read it out. And the question was, uh, is fear somewhat necessary to, necessary to promote necessary steps to prevent spread of disease? The question is, is fear somewhat necessary to promote the necessary steps to prevent spread of disease? For example, if people are not afraid, they may not comply with the recommendations for social distancing. So someone has asked the question, isn't fear somewhat necessary so people behave? Uh, and you know, yeah, and I think if people say, you know, we all believe in Swami and we don't have, you know, we will not spread uh, disease, we may be flagrantly violating what the public health authorities have said. So shouldn't fear be a necessary motivator to behave properly? It's a question. So when that is so, why is Swami saying, don't be afraid of death? So that's the question. So can someone answer, attempt to answer, please? I think uh, fear shouldn't be the main factor. Uh, our civic responsibility and our uh, duty, the five values, if you take, we have our own um, responsibility. Fear should be the factor to uh, avoid uh, listening to uh, the health or th what the health authorities are saying we have to abide what i'm saying is uh, fear should not be the factor to um, this situation uh, we as a um, spy family or as uh, all canadians we should follow what the health authority is saying we have our civic responsibility we have our responsibilities to our family neighbors our city to keep ourselves safe if uh, fear is the one that uh, will save no when you fear we panic and we have anxieties we don't um, think properly so that's not going to work Sairam. thank you very much sister thank you very much Anyone else? yes Yes, I am. Um, so basically, as a Swami's devotees, I think we should be setting the precedence and then we should be, uh, you know, setting an example for everyone else by following the authorities, not questioning. The government is, you know, putting extreme measures to put things in place is for our own benefit, right? And they are learning from what is happening across the world. So we should take the onus upon ourselves first to educate about what is happening and then uh, to implement what they are asking, right? Not only for ourselves, our families, and to the next extent, take care of our own devotees as well as the extended community as well. So we should not really um you know question what they are doing but i i firmly believe that you know they should come back and then actually tell us that oh my god i'm really surprised by sai Divuti. not only they help us to uh, clean up the efforts but you know um, they they went and beyond the call of duty and i wanted to remind what uh, mahatma gandhi did during the time when he was in africa there was plague that was happening so the government called and indicated to him, it's we are having a hard time controlling this plague and people in your community, especially in Indian community, we find it spreading very fast. So we need your help. And they pointed out that they're not following the healthy measures that we are suggesting. So Gandhi actually took it upon himself to go and clean every single house in those poor areas. And then Gandhi talks about how 
that um, he was not struck by plague and he felt so bad to even ask other people to come and help him because you know it was a very um, uh, fearsome a, a disease and you know it would kill kill people who are actually in touch with uh, you know other things that comes into contact so gandhi didn't ask anybody to follow him he by himself went in and he was actually cleaning the toilet rooms of all the indians houses so ultimately he talks about in his autobiography that he was not um, in any way came down with the illness because the God helped him. The God he knew he had right intention, right? So that is, that is what's important. We should set the precedence to the government and the health authorities. We should not only uh, help ourselves keep our houses clean, and help with the cleanup efforts by following what they're asking us to do. We should put aside all our needs and wants and our parties, even to, you know, so if they ask us to minimize going outside on the road, and we should literally do that because we can see what the impact has happened outside in the world. Thank you. Sorry, I took longer than two minutes. No, no, thank you very much, sister. Thank you very much. When no one else is speaking, it's fine. Thank you. Uh, does anyone has anyone else no, has are, something to say? Yes, those are really valid points uh, the sister mentioned. It's really great ideas. I think as a Sai family, we should all uh, follow that kind of procedure. It's very excellent ideas. I uh, really appreciate that. Anyone else Aaron. has anything? Okay. Yes, Sister Kalyani. Uh, there is a question in the chat box. Um, okay. Should the public health authorities be trusted? They are not rishis. That, that's okay. a I think I just answered. That's what I was alluding to. Uh, unless everyone, anyone else has any other points. I have a comment with respect to that. Um, the two questions, the questions you asked earlier, brother, no, is that uh, one is the doing the duty. The second one is Swami saying fearing death. This fearing death is very different from being a good citizen. Uh, public health authorities or the government is they are is telling us what to do and as good citizens and as we do what they tell us to do we follow that um, as good citizens but fearing death is our spiritual um, acceptance or beliefs or uh, what we understand about ourselves and as we previously someone mentioned death is just the death of our body not for our soul our soul has a long way it never dies right and our goal of our life is to make sure that we merge with swami um, it might take multiple words, so this might be the last word, so we don't know. Um, so those are two different things. So I think uh, public health um, authorities are not wishes, yes, but um, as good citizens, I think we need to uh, abide by the rule and set precedents as good side devotees or get set an example for others. That's the point. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Anyone else would like to add something? I think just to add the point, uh... Yes, the public health authorities are not rishis. In the sense, uh, their knowledge itself is not complete. Uh, they have some partial understanding, most probably. I think even today, the scientific community is uh, uh, consistent in saying that you know we really don't know everything about this virus. Uh, but I think they know some things about the virus. And so I think what they are confident of having known, I think we can. Um, take that into consideration, you know, but we don't have to place complete uh, faith in that. It's, for example, we all believe, uh, for example, when Swami says, uh, don't believe the world, but believe God, uh, don't forget God. I think one of the things is um, we all believe, you know, if the health authority comes and says, wash your hands, we think that will save us. Uh, if the health authorities come and say, use hand sanitizer, we, be, we are ready to believe. We, even if they, we, we don't know who they are, uh, because there are other health authorities who would say, yes, yes, what they are saying is right. So based on this, we tend to run our lives based on certain belief system. Um, but I think what Swami says is their knowledge itself may not be complete. So that is why you don't put all your faith in that. And he says, uh, if, if your faith in God is much more, um, that can save you. 
Um, that's what Swami would say. Um, because we don't, you know, we all think, you know, Swami is God, his vibhuti is miraculous, uh, you sing bhajans, you know, we all talk about it, but do we really believe in the core of our heart that if I sing bhajan, that's good? Of course, then how we sing bhajan, how much we are connecting to God, all that matters. But uh, there are great uh, saints, uh, great devotees who have overcome death itself. Poisons did not affect, uh, you know, people uh, tortured them, that did not affect them. Um, people tried to kill them in many ways, but that nothing, none of those natural laws uh, worked out because of only one thing, because of their belief in God. And I think sometimes we think we have, we believe Swami, but I think it's time for us to ask the question, um, do we really believe in Swami? Do we be really believe that if I say Sai Ram, any disease which any uh, disease should not touch me? You know, if we have that faith, of course that will that will be much doing much more than what the health authorities are saying. Um, that's my personal view. Uh, it's not necessarily. Uh, Every, I don't think everyone will share, but I thought I will mention it anyway. Sairam. Sairam Swami says, so, Swami says um, everyone to be a good citizen too, right? So in order for that, don't they have to follow gov what government is saying? In addition to the faith on Swami, yes, one Swami's faith. The other side, okay. Okay, the congregation shouldn't be over 50 or now 10 people. Be supposed to follow that or not? We have to, am I correct? To be a good citizen. So that's the way I look at it. Uh, we, along with Swami's faith, we have to follow what government is saying. That's my... Um, I think uh, we should not cause problems to the government because they are ultimately responsible for us and others in this in this uh, community and we should not make it too complicated for them so we should follow the um, rules uh, which are imposed by them uh, as good citizen i think as good civic sense but not uh, our total confidence should be on swami and that swami is the one who really will save us but uh, we should follow the Guy, um, rules which the municipal government, provincial, federal governments impose on us uh, to be good citizens. I think that is one of the uh, expectations based on the nine point code of conduct. And, and so I, I, brother, I don't know, I would like to draw a parallel to the science and the spiritual aspect of things, if I may. Um, so lately, uh, I've been doing um, a lot of soul searching and also finding out uh, a lot of scientific facts about faith and then what happens when we meditate, etc. So I just wanted to take some time to talk about it. So um, uh, in the olden days, um, uh, this is a group called Silva Meditation Method. So Jose Silva in the 60s actually did a lot of uh, research on how the mind works, the psychology behind it, etc. And then uh, I think a lot of the universities have even given him P PhD for the research that he did on the development of the mind. So there is a group, um, you know, that uh, there's a meditation group that emphasizes on this. So the bottom line is, when we, are, when we have faith, when we are meditating, our brain goes through uh, the uh, vibration cycle, right? So they actually group it to 0 to 4, 5 to 14, and then, you know, 15 to 20, etc. right? Like there's different cycles that our brain vibrates, free cycles of frequency that our brain vibrates. So normally, when we are talking, is at the 20, 14 to 20 cycles per second. And then when we start meditating um, or you know, doing spiritual activity, the brain frequency goes down. And they have proven that um, when your um, vibration, the frequency, when it goes down, um, you, know, you are able to heal yourself. And they have proven that all the yogis, um, 
when they t took a look at the yogi when they are meditating, the how you know at the, their brain cycles is around seven to ten. And they have also proven there's a lot of research that is being ongoing done every day, and we don't get to hear about it. Right? So they say that um, they have introduced. Uh, animals and then uh, viruses that are very sick into and then they have exposed these animals uh, to the control cycles like you know only seven to ten cycles of frequency and nothing else and they found that you know these animals were able to cure themselves so the proof is if you have faith right you know your your mind is vibrating at a lower frequency and you are able to you know do things that other normal person that is not able to have right because you are controlling your body and your mind is so much calmer and the faith is actually driving you and uh, you know you are able to heal yourself so that is why swami always emphasized that you know you need to have these good practices meditation bhajan singing and and then the right action so he they have actually gone to prove that when you're doing service to other people what happens to your body and mind and you know it's going it's vibrating at a lower frequency cycle so when you're ex exercising you are strengthening your body so when you're in spiritual activities like meditating you are strengthening your mind so that is the parallel I see, right? Like that, it goes to goes with the point that I mentioned earlier, that you know, if you can control your mind, and if you can make it productive by practicing these spiritual values, you can control your body. The faith is the first thing that is actually going to help us to do this. I don't know how what a how, how a good job I did, but uh, I welcome any questions. And it, it, it's a long topic. I just wanted to emphasize that, you know, everything goes hand in hand. Uh, you know, every time we are we are doing you know, service to other people, you, Swami says, when you are doing service to other people, you are doing service to yourself because good hormones are flowing inside you. When you're going out and helping a senior. Yes, you're physically helping her, but ultimately you have felt good, you have brought peace in yourself, and you have improved your ability as a human being to just think outside the box and do things for others. Right? So that that is why like all of this, um, and then in this, uh, he also he also talks about, you know, um even doing good thing right like you know the right action if you if, if knowingly if you do something bad it will actually impact your body how is how does it do it say for example you don't know that um, smoking is bad but you continue to smoke it the body will help heal yourself because in your mind you don't know that the uh, cigarette smoking is bad but if you knowingly continue to do it, yo, I, I know they, they are putting all these signs on the cigarette box, smoking is bad, it's going to kill you, it's going to affect your lungs, etc. And then you continue to do it, you are allowing your immune system to weaken and you are inviting the disease. Coming back to the point again, you know, if you have faith and if you believe on Swami and if you do the right things, you, I, I have a strong feeling that you will not attract illness. And it has been proven, it has been proven uh, in the science, scientific way as well. Thank you. So no doubt, I think we, we talk about the laws and regulations of the country we live in. I think Brother Surya Kumar has mentioned in the chat box that obeying the laws and regulations of the country we live in is practicing nonviolence. Now talking about uh, the uh, our practice of regulations in the country we live in. I think as I devotees, we also should pay attention to the code which Swami has given us, which includes daily meditation and bhajan at home. Personal sadhana is something which Swami has asked us to do. Um, that will have a positive impact on us and everyone around us. And I think uh, if we do some soul searching, we'll realize 
how diligent we are in practicing the nine points of code of conduct which swami has given to us all because if we have practice if we practice them uh, they go far and beyond any health authority guidance which we get and of course we will follow the uh, laws of the land uh, but um, i think we would go very far in doing our best uh, in this current situation so i think with that what i would do is uh, brother rishi you can read the paragraph yeah next paragraph sure on one occasion the epidemic of cholera struck one village at the entrance to this village there was the house of the doctor he was watching as the goddess of the disease cholera was entering the village he asked the goddess where she was going the goddess replied that she was going into the village to take the lives of certain number of people the doctor became very friendly and even invited the goddess to have a cup of coffee with them the doctor was informed by the goddess of cholera that she will take about 150 lives after some time the panchayat president of the village came to the doctor and asked him to certify that 250 persons had been killed by the cholera disease the doctor then surmised that even the goddess had not honored the commitment given by her according to which she was to take only 150 lives when the goddess of cholera was returning she again met the doctor who questioned why she had broken her promise and extracted 250 lives to this the goddess replied that she stuck to her word and she had only taken 150 lives but that the other 100 100 people died because of fear of death and she was not responsible for their death in a lighter vein the story reveals that the truth that one should not be afraid of death as it will surely overtake you one day or the other you must develop the capacities to forget the material world and not to forget god and not to fear death thank you brother rishi i think the story should be have been easy for everyone to follow as you can see the, uh, the goddess of cholera met the village doctor and promised that she would take only 150 people but at the end of the epidemic 250 people had died in that village and when the doctor asked the goddess uh, she said uh, Oh, I took only 150, but the other 100 they died out of fear. So Swami, uh, uh, with this funny story, Swami is telling us uh, to root out fear from our mind to even stay healthy. And I think the last line is pretty. I think it's what he started out. He is again re-emphasizing. We must develop the capacities to forget the material world. not to forget god and not to fear death i think we need to know how we can practice these three things which i thought i will spend time on forget the material world for example you know we all know there is coronavirus um we know that a few countries are suffering but the problem is that our uh, appetite for news is never ending you know uh we are we will be watching because i think everyone is home i'm sure people are watching a lot of news and on the youtube and uh, uh, whatsapp groups people are circulating lots of material videos and so on some of them are very troubling the more we look at them and the more negative our mind will tend to be dwelling on death suffering etc the thing is even if we see other people suffer we are unable to do anything it is just that we feel more suffocated and suffering and feel helpless so i think sometimes even the appetite for lots of news is not beneficial to everyone including ourselves because it uh, basically overemphasizes the negative reactions in us negative emotions starting from fear helplessness and so on so that is one reason swami says forget the material world means don't dwell on it you know 
uh, you listen and you process the information and then move on and then what are we supposed to do he says not to forget god so he says don't forget god so if we are awake say 18 hours in a day we should ask ourselves how many minutes did we think of god not think of god uh, in the sense oh god what are you going to do uh, to us uh, can't you fix this problem you know not that type of thinking of god but earnest continuous thought of god is what swami is emphasizing uh, in many other places swami has talked about ananya chinta with with no other thought but god not to forget god and not to fear death and we should not be afraid of i think swami has given some examples of devotees who have practiced it also let's take uh, meera she was uh, being tortured in many ways but she never paid attention to any of those that she just prayed to krishna uh, she was given poison which didn't do anything to her because she was not thinking looking at the poison and saying oh this is poison it's going to kill i'm going to die she was just lost in the thought if we can practice something like that and that way swami would have swami would be happy i guess with all of us and this is a good opportunity for us to say yes we are staying home how much of time is spent in sadhana how much time are we watching swami's videos um, there are lots of bhajan videos um, there is lots of uh, swami's talks available radio sai has a discourse stream we can listen to swami's discourses we can read swami's discourses so if we um, keep ourselves busy with all that i'm sure naturally the fear of death will not touch us uh, because we are we are in his presence and god is with us all the time is what i think i think with those words i will stop um, for others to chime in with whatever has touched them uh, in this story and this paragraph sai ram sai ram brothers and sisters this is ananti um i would i just want to um, point out only one thing uh, this story concludes that you must develop the capacities to forget the material world not to forget god and not to fear death even though theoretically or practically we all agree we shouldn't forget god and uh, we all, we all you know the one way or another we practice we shouldn't forget god and you know the all the meditation or the prayers and everything the very first um thing swami insisted you must develop the capacities to forget the material world i believe most of us as a community we don't um we even though theoretically we accept this factor in practice i believe we don't practice that particular part recently in all grocery stores if we go in there we can see that um how much you know the in practice we are doing that you know the to forget the material world maybe that is a really important thing we all should develop i strongly agree that we shouldn't forget god and all of all of my brothers and sisters in this forum you all you know they agree with you know we shouldn't forget god and not to fear that maybe um that is also all the maybe yogis and jnanis and they have already told us um we shouldn't get fear to that because uh, um it's it's like you are changing your old clothes and get into a new cloth so similarly you should be very happy when you leave this body old body and uh, in your mind you have to think that you will get a new uh you know the new body to get a new life or something so that part also the very first one we all should develop you know the, that's my personal opinion and uh, uh the 
you may or may not agree, but that part, I believe, we have to develop. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, sister. Anyone else would like to add to this, please? I think brother has uh, put a comment on the chat box, so I will read it out. Swami says, why fear when I am here? That is having God always in our thoughts and in our hearts. So we must have firm faith in God as he is the creator. He will always protect us. Anyone else would like to add something? please? Well, Sairam, uncle, I just wanted to ask a question if you could clarify. Um, so if you do have the, if you have that faith that the name of Swami will protect you, but you do end up getting sick with COVID or dying, does that mean that there was a problem with your faith to begin with? Very good question, sister, but I will let others answer first. Can someone answer this question? Uh, Sairam, uh, I believe is uh, getting sickness is nothing to do with fear or uh, anything is th that is with your own karma I think we shouldn't be fear getting sick and uh, uh, getting death like that um, I don't believe in that if you if you will die in your own karma will play on that even though any virus or any sickness or anything you can uh, get um, accident with die also anytime the time comes we will reach with God uh it's nothing to do with covid 19 i think i believe and also earlier that sister mentioned about uh, meditation we should practice in sai centers with uh, the good people to teach how to meditate how to control of your breath and everything is help us more improve our you know system to develop a good way and thinking positively and doing meditation is very good thing i I believe we have to do more study circle on that. I started doing the next week, but I don't know. We can invite the good people to explain the right way to how to meditate and how to breathing. Breathing control is very important to meditate. I don't know. We 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 can access those people. That is our size centers rules and regulations. I would like to ask you, is is possible? Sometimes we don't explain how the right way. I do meditation, I do do the practice of breathing control and everything is helping me more to control my mind and things is helping. But I would like to tell other people also how to do, but I cannot explain the better way. Uh, if, if I can, we can invite some people expert on that. They can explain the right way, Saira. Saira, um, just to add, uh, add to what uh, Sister Carl said, this is my view on this. Um, you, we have faith in Swami, and even if you have that faith, and if you get um, COVID virus or get sick, and I think uh, that uh, that the auntie explained, uh, it is your karma, and uh, I would take it as Swami is helping me experience the or live that karma or burn that karma off by um having this disease and uh, if having this disease in this birth with being a swami's believer i mean trusting in swami and swami's help that burden or suffering that you are having might be made less and so in that way swami is helping me in that sense as well to live out this karma in this birth so i would take it in that sense so it's not because i did something wrong um it is a gift in a sense that uh, swami is helping me experience it in this birth and burn off the karma as quickly as possible in this birth. Thank you, Sairam. Sairam. Sairam, uh, sorry, I'm going to go back to the before question whether we should uh, listen to the um, health uh, uh, department. Um, my personal opinion is Swami is showing us an example. Nothing moves without his wish. See, Swami has closed his uh, center and showing us, listen to them. So we should 100% listen to them and Swami, stay home and pray Swami, nothing will happen, Sairam. Thank you, sister. So I, I, I think I will comment on that question. So I think if you have faith that the name of Swami will protect you and you end up sick with COVID or dying, does that mean there was a problem with your faith? I think it has been very well answered by others. Uh, 
it is just that uh, I think the faith in Swami is not necessarily uh, for the purpose of us not falling sick, us not falling, uh, uh, us not becoming poor, uh, and things like that. You know, our family is looked after well, you know, natural calamities affect us. I don't think the faith should be dependent on any of that. The faith should be um, over and above. It should transcend such situations. Yeah, that's what the great uh, devotees did. You know, they were not worried. And sometimes difficulties after difficulties came to them, but they were not affected by them. And I think that is what the secret of success in devotion is. Even if what the world may think as calamities in one's life, if the devotee is not shaken, is not affected, uh, is happy thinking of God. And I think that is the type of faith Swami wants us to cultivate. And that's why he says, do not forget God. Means a, a devotee will never forget God, even when there are problems, even, even when they are suffering, uh, even if they're ailing, uh, they will not be affected in the least uh, from, they will not be distracted or disturbed from their thought of God. Um, I think that is the real benefit from having faith in God. Um, and he will do whatever he can. And I think um, one brother has uh, put a comment. I will read out on the chat box. The same Gandhiji the devotees were quoting engaged in necessary and vital acts of disobedience to remove the British authorities from India. What would be Sai's teachings on this form of necessary civil disobedience? Um, this is the question. Anyone would like to comment on that? Sairam, so, um, I think what we have to think about is in life, we always have two choices. One is to choose fear or one is to choose love. And in a crisis such as this, we have to decide how we're going to react, either with fear or with love. So, you know, whether it's you're reaching out to your neighbor, you're staying home, you're not hoarding supplies, or you're following healthcare professionals' instructions, or whether you think you should participate in civil disobedience to help someone out of love. You know, I think it depends on what your motivation is. If you're motivated by love to serve others, to serve the God that is in others, then maybe whatever your civil disobedience is could be considered okay. But in general, I think we have to decide, are we acting out of fear or are we acting out of love? Saram. Thank you very much, Sister. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone would like to uh, comment? I would like to comment on um, chat comment. Um, you know, it was asking about um, Mahatma Gandhi uh, being disobedient uh, uh, during the British uh, uh, in, in uh, the civil war that was happening. So basically, um, you know, there is disagreement, but then how do we actually express our disagreement? He was not violent. He was exhibiting non-violent way of, you know, um, uh, disobedience, right? And it's in every situation, you know, we are not, we might not want, we might not be able to agree with every situation, but how do we respond to that? So in, in Gandhi emphasize and Gandhi was totally against um, violent and you know he had uh, his uh, conflict with those who were fighting with arms as well, but he continued to practice nonviolence and you know he continued to um, advocate for everyone to make sure that you know um, even when they are uh, disobeying the government, they are respecting of all the authorities and they follow what he specifically told them. And if some situations when the riots were happening, he came and told them, you know, we are stopping our uh, Satyagraha movement because none of you are following what I'm telling you to do. You know, this is not how I want the movement to continue like that. So um, Gandhi was in disagreement with the government, but he always practiced uh, nonviolence, truth and peace. Thank you very much, sister. Anyone else would like to comment? 
Sai Ramaron, I would like to uh, experience my Swami's belief and Swami's uh, thing with my own experience. Um, uh, yes, day before yesterday, uh, my husband come from Sri Lanka. Um, I try to get so many people to get my husband home, even Uber drivers and limos and lots of people getting sick fear because his flight is coming from Europe, uh, like a Germany. No one going to pick up my uh, husband like they are kind of fear. There's a one person come with a thing. He's only 29 years boy. And he come to my home and he said, Auntie, I will help. Not only come with the help, I was kind of fear sending my son to the airport without a mask. I don't have a mask. In the night I pray, Swami, please help me. Then the boy come with the one box of mask. He, he told me, you have to have a mask and with the old families, you have to continue for uh, two weeks. I have a mask for you and your children, and I can help you to get 14 days, any help for you, and uh, anything you, I can help you. I was thinking, I got the message, my dad is coming from the airport, is anyone uh, can help that the person? I am thinking, I protect myself with the God, I can help your husband, and uh, I am thinking your husband is my father. I was thinking, I prayed all night to help somebody to help my husband to come from the thing. He come with the mass box and everything. I am very, very happy. I believe in God. You know, that's the thing, only thing uh, we, we should think of. We believe in God any way Swami will come and help us. This is the thing. We shouldn't be fear of death. We come from the world, all the war zone. Every time God help us to come to Canada, we are thinking about, we can't even see the virus. I don't know why we are we having fear. We shouldn't be fear. We have to be very positive way to protect these things. I am always very positive and very, very happy. Swami with us, we shouldn't be fear. And I conclude myself, I had my own experience. Swami personally come and help me to this situation. I believe in God. Uh, I think we shouldn't be fear. Thank you, Sairam. Thank, thank you, sister. Um, I think we are almost reaching the end of our time, 4.41, it's uh, at 4.45, we were planning to close the session. Um, um, it was an excellent study circle. Uh, we had lots of discussions. Uh, I think lots of uh, food for thought. I'm sure uh, each of us will go away having a few questions still burning in our head but hopefully in the next few sessions uh, we will address them um, as we read more and more of Swami's teaching and Swami sure will guide us he's the one who has made this possible and I'm sure he has his own plan of what each of us will take from here and um, those are my parting thoughts uh, thanks to every one of you who took time to be, pa be part of the session today. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, uh, please email them to us at the region to email, uh, which you all must be having from the email which was forwarded to you. You can send your questions or you can even call, I think five names and phone numbers are given. You can call any one of them and um, give you questions uh, hopefully we will take them up for discussion at the next uh, session uh, next sunday at 3 30. Um, so those are my parting thoughts um, i think we can talk about uh, swami's uh, disobedience at the next uh, session i think selection two um, uh, talks a bit more i think on that topic so i think i will leave it for next week to discuss it further and i think there are a few comments uh, which i think on the chat box i will just read it out um valuable study circle for all of us during this time thanks to all may swami guide us and be with us thank you brother for organizing this session saira so it was a wonderful session it took, made us all think of swami um and hopefully that uh, 
uh, becomes a permanent memory in our own uh, mind and heart. And may Swami guide us through all these uh, uh, developments, uh, which we may have to face day in and day out for the next little while. Okay. Thank you very much. So we will close the study circle session with Samastha Loka and Shanti. Okay. Sairam, everyone.